Hello and welcome to another SQL walkthrough. In this walkthrough we are going to talk about um, subqueries. And so subqueries are a, a powerful and useful technique. Uh, people don't like using them in high performance situations like for online systems, but uh, we're going to use them a lot for uh, data manipulation, especially the kinds of things that we're uh, just going to do once. Um, or it, it's, a, it's a way to manipulate data that we're not going to do, you know, a thousand times a second. So let's take a quick look at uh, some data. Um, <clears throat> the idea of a subquery is it takes the results of one query and feeds it into another query. So if we just take a look here, so we get select star. This, this is pulling out a one row of, of a record. But if I, if I switch this to be, um, you know, select content, from comment where account ID equals one, well, that is going to find one of the comments for Ed, right? So if you recall earlier when we were hand constructing some of, some of our many-to-many -many relationships, um, we, were, we were remembering, um, so let's, uh, let's actually um, make this be a select star. Select star from comment where account ID equals one, right? And so account ID, we are, we are knowing what these things were, what these post IDs were. Um, we're, we're figuring all these things out and uh, by hand. But we can actually look at this. So we can say, wait a sec. We actually know we have a way of looking up this number one. And we can look it up with a where clause here. And so what we're going to say is I'm going to say select ID from select ID from account where email equals edit you edu. So here we go. This is a way to get at that number. Wouldn't it be nice if we could say we could run this one here and get this number here instead and then we could actually look up content from comment where account where email equals edit you edu. and that's kind of what the simplest of subselects are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and I'm put in some parentheses and I'm going to take this select statement and put it in there. So now I have select content from comment where account ID equals and then this select statement. This is why they call them subqueries or subselects because what it does is Postgres runs this select, gets this number, and then runs the outer select. This is both the reason that people love them and the pe reason that people hate them is that it requires, in effect, two separate operations, which the outer operation is, in a sense, paused until the inner operation finishes. What we're doing here is almost instantaneous for both of them. But if you're doing this for a long time on things that run over and over and over again, it can be inefficient. But basically, it works exactly as you would expect. Now, And so the way you work is you work until you get like your query the way you want it that gives you this number. And then you have a query that uses a number, like this select content query. And then you say, oh, I can combine those two things, and so away that I go, right? So that's what the simplest of subqueries is. Um, and so that's a very, very simple subquery, and it's very counterintuitive. Now, there's another version of the subquery, and let's go back to a previous example where we are using the having clause. Remember, the having clause happens after the, after the group by process, so we have this group by, and then we have an effect the results that come back from that. So we get that group by to finish, and then we have this having clause, and then we're going to have an order by. Well, what if you didn't have a having clause? You could use an outer and an inner where clause. So you take, so what we do is this, right? Select. So let me let me do this a little differently. Let me change where this line breaks. Let me put this parenthesis out here, make this more than one line so we can see it a little better. Okay, so this is a subquery right here, and this is a query that you can run. You can actually run this query and you can see what's going to happen. Oops, I forgot a semicolon. And you see that it's a series of rows. So this is a query that doesn't, like the previous one, it just made a single number. This one creates a previous row, set of rows. So what I can do this is now I can put this in the from clause. So this the from clause to this outer query, CT abriv, and then 
away I go, right? And so I give this as zap. This as zap is a way to give this inner temporary table in a sense. This is like if I'm going to make a table because this the whole parenthesis right here is that's like a table that I just am making temporarily. I'm running this query. I'm running this query right here. And then I am creating a table that will temporarily name zap. And then I'm going to select from that and I'm going to apply a where clause to it, right? Actually, this one would be better done if I made that be a false. Doo -doo -doo. So this shows you a technique that I use a lot, and that is I use a text editor to build up my um, I use a text editor to build up my queries, and then I pop them over, and then I copy them, and I paste them in. So if I don't like it, I can change it. So there we go. We get a little better count there, right? So there's 26, 35. We're going to try to make a where clause, but this outer bit. That is going to be the table, quote unquote, from which this outer clause is going to run. So without further ado, let's do that. So we're going to, the CT, and, and you, you all, as you build these, you'll notice that the output of this query is two columns, and I am treating those, and I, I can give these things different names because this CT is just the first column of the inner query, and a brev is just the second column of the inner query. And so, but there has to be the same number. If I don't put the same number here, it'll be unhappy. But then what I can do is I can treat this output as a table itself, right? And so that's, that's what's going on. So if I run this whole thing, you're gonna see this with a where clause, right? And the where clause is this outer number, this CT. So that t this became a table, that became a where clause. I could even add to this an order by. But then that order by, oops, CT desk. So that's going to order by this CT, which is this virtual column here. And so that's going to order by them in descending. So the largest one is going to be first. And so the, 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 the subquery is one of those things that it's really essential. But, um, and, and again, it, it's an optimization boundary where we can't make this query go faster. This outer query must completely wait until the inner query is completely finished. And then it sort of, almost, if this query is big enough, it kind of has to write it all out to disk and then it has to read that query back in. Now, nothing here is large enough that it matters and it's all instantaneous. But this is why um, database tuners, especially for online systems, uh, do not like subqueries. But for us, in a more of a data mining context, sometimes subqueries are essential. And we are typing commands that might run for a half a second, but we're only going to type them once, and so we're not running an online system. And so subqueries are uh, super powerful and super a lot of potential, uh, but we avoid them uh, quite a bit in uh, online systems. Cheers.